Hey folks, we here once again and welcome back to another video. I hope you all enjoyed my TV show collection part 31 for The Flash, the 2014 CW show from Grand Gustin. And now getting into that, it's not just the TV show collection. Oh, by the way, thank you guys for the views. Awesome, I appreciate it. Keep on watching my videos, I appreciate it as always. Got two more subscribers as well, so 407, so thank you. Let's hopefully keep it up. Uh, anyway, now I'm giving my thoughts on all the seasons, well, season 1 through 5. But, I am starting this video, starting with the first season, of course, giving my thoughts, slash favorite episodes. These are just my thoughts and favorite episodes of The Flash, season one, of what I think of the season, and my favorite episodes, and okay episodes. But remember, it's just season one through five we're talking about. So anyway, that is The Flash, season one. My thoughts and favorite episodes of The Flash, the first season. Yeah. yeah. Which, I love this season, I thought it was really good, the story was really good. So the acting was really good. I thought the characters, the villain was really, really good. It's really good. This show really started off good in my opinion. I do have some minor issues with this season, with this season, but it's not like where I want to, you know, just well pull my head out or my hair out. Yeah, it makes me want to, you know, pull my hair. You know, I don't have any hair, but just or you know, just makes me mad or gets on my nerves or something that you know irritates me. No, I love this season. I thought it was really good. I thought it was a well done season. Uh, it wasn't perfect, like I said, but it was a really good first talk of The Flash. You know, this is before they went woke, you know. Yeah, before the storylines were getting lame. This is when the show was really good, in my opinion. Yeah. So, anyway. And I would not be talking about Flash vs. Zero in this season. I'll be reviewing that episode, because that's a crossover episode. Um, I will tell my episodes, though, that Barry did um, share with uh, Brandon Ralph, who was uh, Ray Palmer, the Adam and Felicity Smoke, but yeah, I don't really consider those crossovers that much. I mean, you could for one episode, but it's like, eh, okay, I'll talk about it, because it goes into era of season four a little bit later on, one of the episodes do. But, uh, yeah, I will not be talking about Flash vs. Arrow. So remember, this is just my opinion, my thoughts on the season, so, and if you're not big into the show, you're not interested in watching it, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, well, like I said, this is the only shirt that I have the Flash on, so I don't have a Flash shirt, sorry. But anyway, talking about the first season, the first season of course starts everything. It follows Barry Allen, who is a crime science investigator who gains superhuman speed from the explosion of the Star Wars lab, of the Star Lab Par Particle Accelerator and becomes the custom superhero of the Flash. He uses his new powers to fight crime Colonels, along with other American humans who have also gained superhuman abilities in Central City. Barry eventually discovers that his mentor, Harrison Wills, Dr. Harrison Wills, who's a, like, a real famous scientist of Star Labs, and like I said, some spoilers too, is actually Eubar Thawne, aka the Reverse Flash, his arch enemy from the future, who traveled back in time to murder his mother, Noah Allen, when he was a child. Thawne is ultimately erased from existence when his ancestors. Wait a minute, I'm sorry. I don't want to get to that yet. Of course, I'm fighting villains and, you know, fighting over what Dr. Wells is up to. Yeah. So anyway, this season was breaking his super speed from accident caused by Star Labs. We have some fight criminals who also get powers from the same accident and help him marry pursue his mother's killer, the Reverse Flash. Alright. So, kind of the plot synopsis of the season. Alright, of course, my and I do have my paper for my episodes right here. Yeah, you know, like I always write down in a pen, of course. So my first favorite is, of course, the pilot episode of The Flash. Yeah, I have it written down here. Yeah. Alright. Yeah. So the episode, so the pilot of The Flash starts with, you know, Barry Allen, uh, who's a forensic crime scene investigator. He talks about his past. What I'm about to tell you is, you know, real. Tells him about himself, and Barry seems to always be late. That he's a forensic scientist for the police. He, like, finds evidence and stuff. He's really good at that. And uh, he talks about his youth. You do see Barry's past a little bit, you know, talking about Barry Allen himself that... Barry's not, not fast enough to run from the criminal, run from bullies. He's like, you see Barry as a little kid, being bullied by kids, him going to his mother, and his father, his brother, John Lee Shep, 
You do have other two stars in here as well, I mentioned in the season, that were also on the 90s show. And uh, John Wesley Shepp, who plays Barry's father, uh, Henry Allen, he was the Flash in the 1990 series. So he's in here too. He's like, hey, Slugger, how you doing? I said, oh, did you hear him back? She's like, Barry, you can all, his mother tells him, you know, you can run away. And they're about to go to sleep that night. She's like, good night, my beautiful baby boy. You know, gives him her son a kiss good night. They get ready to go to bed. And then all of a sudden, Barry, you know, he's got like this water tank, this fish tank, and you see the water like vibrate up. And of course, it's reverse flight. Well, you don't know what it is. You just see this lightning like it's running around. And his mom's saying, you know, and Barry's father, and he's saying, Barry, get out of here. And all of a sudden, Barry swept out of there. He's like, Dad, Mom, comes back to, you know, because he has to run down from the street. Well, I said there will be spoilers later on in this video. So if you have not watched this season, do not watch this video. So, don't want to spoil it for you. But anyway, Barry goes back to see his mom dead, and his father is arrested. And of course, Henry is accused of murdering his mother. She was stabbed in the heart with a knife. And, it, you know, and of course, it's about 14 years later. Barry has been living with Joe West, Detective Joe West, and his daughter, Iris West, who, is, who Barry has always been in love with, but they just remain friends, you can say. They go to the public server, which Dr. Harrison Wells is explaining. Uh, Barry, they, of course, Barry being, you know, being CSI, for instance, he finds out this murder, and Joe West ended up finding out that it was a guy named Clyde and Mark Martin. Martin? Yeah. That they then, like, they murder somebody, but they are beginning to a plane and fly away. The, yeah, his partner gets killed. The poor girl accelerator blows up, you know, and Barry, who sees this, you know, tries to, you know, cover the windows, but he gets shot by lightning. Therefore, he ends up in a coma for nine months, you know. Yeah, nine months later, Barry wakes up from the coma, meets Caitlin, and just going, of course, Dr. Wells. And Dr. Wells, you know, ended up in a wheelchair because of it. Uh, Barry says, I'm okay, I'm fine, I'm fine. There's nothing wrong with me. I appreciate you guys, you know, helping me out. You know, he goes talk to Iris, see how she's doing. He even finds out that she's dating, well, her dad has a new partner named Eddie Thawne, who we met earlier. And Barry was chasing a criminal who uh, was stealing Iris's purse or whatever, Eddie kisses them and you find out that they're dating probably a little later on, but Barry all of a sudden feels a little different. It's like he can just kind of like, he's in jitters, because they, they have jitters, which ours is working at for coffee and stuff, and he likes, he can stop time or whatever, like time is the world slowing down. But it's actually his speed, but he doesn't realize that yet. And Barry even goes to Joe West saying, okay, Joe, that he's okay, but Joe's like, Barry, you need to rock, you need to go rest. You know, Joe, I mean, Barry sees that this criminal is about to grab this cop's gun, almost does it. So Barry uses super speed, he's like, well, how do I do that? And Barry goes outside, sees his hand moving like really fast, you know, and he runs, you know, knocks himself into a police car, a back of a police car, busts a window, and he's like, oh. And he realizes he's like, freaked out, but kind of amazed by this. So he uses his super speed, and he runs in the guy's truck, he's like, hmm? He's like, Cool. So he goes to Star Labs, tells them about it. Yeah. But then you have this uh, Clyde, whose brother you supposedly think is killed. He wasn't. But... Clyde is this guy, a criminal that has this power to control the weather, kind of a weather wizard, if you will. Uh, he almost runs over Barry and Iris, but Barry thankfully they able to use his speed and save her. He gets in the car with him, and then Barry confronts him, and he, show, you know, is able to create like a a big cloud to get away. He's like, I need to stop this guy, but they have just Barry's powers. Barry's got like this helmet on. He talks to Caitlin, saying. You know, you don't smile very much. He's like, well, the husband, he said, she tells her, he tells her that, you know, her husband, Keanu tells her that, Barry, that her husband died, that she's upset because 
so this smile, so this frown is, you know, upside down for a good reason because of her, of Ronnie dying in the explosion and then Apollo or whatever because he was in there when it went off. So, yeah. Yeah, Barry does want to be a hero, but they're telling him, no, you can't do this, Barry, it just won't work for you. But instead, he goes to visit, he goes to visit, to visit on Oliver Queen, aka the Arrow, before it's called Green Arrow. And Oliver encourages him, you know what? You have great, these great gifts, unique gifts, Barry. And he's like, Barry, the lightning chose you. So therefore, you should use this, your power to do good in the world, to fight criminals, you know, fight for justice and all that, to be a hero. He's like, but it's just different from me. And then, you know, he swings away on his arrow, you know, shoots the arrow into the building, flies, but which is really cool because Barry, even Barry says, cool. And then, you know, uh, the arrow is out of the building, all over it is. Then he sees Barry running, he's like, cool. <laughs> but Stephen and Mo just get started. Then Barry goes back to Central City, convinces Keanu Sisko to help him stop Clyde, along with Dr. Wells, you know. Barry arrives and is, and is, of course, dressed as the Flash, you know. And his suit, with a suit, you know, which I do like the suit and the mask. A, it's different. It's a little bit more red, darker, but it's a really cool suit, you know. And he can't stop him at first. He's like, guys, I can't do it. I can't stop him. He's like, Barry, calm down. You can stop him. You know. You know, Dr. Wells is able to him, you know, just breathe, Barry. Breathe. You know, and... Because Clyde creates like this weather storm, like a tornado, Barry gets in there and runs around and saves him. And then Clyde, before Clyde can shoot Barry, you know, uh, Joe shows up and then he knows, he knows, of course, that he's the Flash. Joe apologizes for not believing him. He tells Barry, though, to keep it a secret from Iris, just to protect her, because he's, you know, worried about Iris, he doesn't want Iris to know at all. Yeah, he even talks to, you can see him in an episode talking to his dad, who was in prison, you know, for the, for accusing the murder, but nobody really believes Barry, but Barry vows to, you know, keep running, and keep using his powers for good, and, you know, get his father out of jail. And then at the end, you see Wells enters a secret room, and apparently he's not handicapped. He goes to his hologram named Gideon, and a newspaper written by Iris West Allen, published on April 25th, 2024, with the headline that reads, Flash Missing Vanishes in Crisis. But great first episode. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Pilot was really good for the episode. Then another favorite of mine, I think, is called let's see, Fastest Man Alive. from there that's the middle of you can see that Joe was actually you know you can see him flashback where him he's teaching flat Joe I mean he's teaching Barry to fight when he was a kid again Joe was like been like a father figure to him he's not his father but he's like one to him because he basically raised Barry because he lived with Barry you know he raised Barry when Barry was a kid Barry had nowhere to go so he took him in to live with him in Iris. Uh, Barry does stop minor crimes, of course, you know, half the time. But he, he, he tries to stop these men from robbing this bank. But unsuccessfully, as Barry, you know, starts to almost like want to pass out. Passes out even, you know, well, he uses speed, just in like a regular suit. 
He does it really quick, but he passes out. Iris wakes him up. He goes to our labs, and finds out that it's his metabolism that, since he has a super speed, his metabolism is different, so he has to eat a lot, or he'll pass out if he doesn't. Uh, you find out about this doctor named Simon Stagg. That doctor, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, he's a businessman, but. Uh, this guy named. One robber named Danton Black, who you find out has the ability to multiply himself, and he wants to kill Simon Stagg, who was actually played by. William Sattler, you know, who's from uh, Bill and Ted, The Bogus Journey, uh, Die Hard 2, yeah, he's in this episode of Simon Stagg. Yeah. But, Stagg won't even talk to the press or whatever, just ignores them. Iris has her own blog, her own a blog, yeah. But, there, you know, there is a plus, she has to stop Danton, you know, tries to fight with a guy, but it gets unsuccessful when he multiplies himself enough, he, they beat the crap out of Barry. And you find out that Harrison Wells has a history with Simon Stagg. But you find out that Stagg still his research, and Stagg's done some illegal stuff too. After Stag, he even, you know, because he most of us are very sure he's super speed to take him out one by one. But it's like, you know, he can still multiply himself even more, ten times more. You know. And they nearly give beat, Barry another beating for his ever run. And Barry realized he can't really take them all one by one because he'll get a beating. So he has to find the real Dan Black. And he does that successfully. By when he runs, you know, using his super speed slowly, using his super speed, he's able to find out because Dan starts sweating. He realizes that he punches him out. Yeah. But, you know, however, Black kills himself because he, his wife also died, so he accuses him that. It's not just about his research. He accused Sag of, you know, of his wife dying as well. Yeah, uh, Barry and Joe, you know, have an issue though the episode where Joe finds out that Barry has an obsession in his lab of his mother's death, and he's like, Barry, you just made all this up. This is not real. You know, because it was like, in the, even in the pilot episode, he's like, Barry, this is not real. You were just a nine year old boy seeing things. Your dad, you know, you need to accept that. The impossible. But then when he realizes Barry becomes the impossible, he realizes that Barry's telling the truth. Then there is the issue of the episode where Barry's like, you're not my father, Joe. You can't tell me what to do, and you can't stop me. But eventually, the, the relationship gets better. So he says, "Okay, I'll help you out." Buddy. He even goes to uh, visit here in prison, saying, "I'm sorry that I thought you were guilty, Henry. Well, yes, we'll investigate. We'll try to help you get, get you out of here." But later, the Wells ends up visiting Stag, who becomes obsessed with the Flash and plans to exploit him as he did to Black. So he wants to, of course, find out who the Flash is, expose him. So, of course, Wells eventually gets out of his wheelchair and says, Ah, sorry, I can't allow that. So, of course, he stabs him with a knife and kills Stag, and Stag ends up missing. He did, yeah, so Wells murders him, and that's the end of the episode. Good episode, though. Alright, and another favorite of mine is called Things You Can't Outrun. This episode opens up with one of the police investigate this crime family. Gets murdered by gas. They get murdered by poison. You see this gas brain, but it was actually a metahuman. Who the person that plays in the episode is the villain in this episode. He was uh, Victor Zass from Gotham, so you know he's really good here too. But 
he found out the man who, who, who can become poison gas, can't control it, he can become it, like an, an, a, an heir of it. Yeah. But Cisco comes up with an idea to, you know, the part of a cellular, a cellular agent where it was, to build a prison out of it for mad humans, that just in case, because they can't be in a normal prison, they can just use their powers and get out. So, but they create a prison for the mad humans so that they can't sort of gather their powers or take away their powers so that they can't get out at all. Yeah. That's what it would do. So they start working on that. But for Caitlin, it's hard for her because she's like, no, we're not going in there. Because Ronnie Raymond, Ronnie died in there. And she's like, no. You have a flashback, though, with Ronnie, uh, played by Robbie and Mill. Or uh, Ronnie, who, you know, when it went off, though, they figured some people were going to get hurt. So Ronnie wanted to go in there try to stop it, but he's like, okay, Cisco, I'm going to try to do this. If I don't come back in two minutes, you lock this door. And then he's the door locked, and sadly, Ronnie dies. But the team I've been identifies the killer as Kyle Nimbus. You figure that he worked for the mafia, for the mob, and I guess they betrayed him, and he did some stuff, so he was sentenced to death. But the Paul Rosero went off that night before he was supposed to be executed, so that's how he got his power. He tries to take on, Barry tries to take him on at first. You see him kill this lady in an elevator, you know, and he almost puts the flash on his last breath, you know, attacks Barry with his powers, comes close to killing him. And the team was that Joe was the detective in the case. He's talking to Henry about, you know, that was trying to get him out of prison. Nymphs, Kyle shows up and says, Hello, Detective West. Yep, you try, you try to put me, you, I was almost asked to death because of you. He thought, Well, you murdered people. You know, you deserve to be in prison. So he uses his ability, tries to kill Joe. Barry's able to save him. His dad looks at him, but he's able to, you know, Push his face or whatever, so his dad can't tell that he's the Flash. So Barry runs off and tries to, you know, fight Kyle, but says like, "Barry, you can't let him on Gary." You know, Barry, you're just not Gary Barry. So he tells, you know, tell, so Flash, you know, is able to use his super speed, basically just to excuse the pun, to basically make Kyle run out of breath, you know, of his abilities, which works, and Barry's able to take him out and lock him up. And as many humans said, he's mad, he's trying to get out, but he can't because it's dampering his powers. Uh, you then see Willis going to his secret room where Gideon is. He goes in there and he sees and he looks at the surveillance the video of Barry getting struck by lightning in his lap. Exactly, mostly like because he planned it for that to happen, for him to become the Flash. Alright, but anyway, that's just, I mean, things you can't run. Really good episode. So. Like I said, sometimes there's drama. But when the drama's there, it's good. For this season, yeah. And then another favorite of mine is called Going Rogue. Uh, and Wells wants Barry to go faster, he uses super speed for being quicker. And they have him, you know, which is really cool, using him in, the, in his flash suit, you know, running from missiles. Barry's able to, you know, obviously grab a missile and, like, throw it, which is really cool. But then you have these group of men that attempt to hijack, an, you know, a truck. Flash shows up, knocks them all out. And one of them, of course, is Leonard Snart. Then this is where you have Felicity Smoke arrives to check on Barry. You know, after learning from his coma. You know, she introduces them, and, she, of course, she tells her he's the Flash. <laughs> you know says, okay, we can get over here, you know. And this is before, you know, Felicity. Felicity is gorgeous, I'm not going to lie. 
But she does become annoying a little later on in the era, but for now, Felicity's cool and funny, has a good sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> Can randomly just, you know, just has it, you know. But Barry, <laughs> he shows her his powers by by running up a building real fast and taking a picture of her. <laughs> and his feet are burning because he can't really do super speed or he'll burn out of his clothes <laughs> if he goes too fast. But Snarl figures that, you know, he wants to get back at the Flash. He's like, he wants to kill the Flash. And he's like, you know, we can have more money this town to go if we can rob a lot more places. And his man's like, well, we're, you know, once not he's far he's an attitude with him or whatever. He says, Snarl, I'm out. And so I was like, okay. Power and shoot somebody like, you want out? Anybody else want out? Yeah. And of course, his men go to Star Labs, they steal an ice gun. Well, first, no, he's not called the Flash, right? He's called the Streak, the Running Streak, because that's what people see. Because you really don't see Flash, but well, he's not known as the Flash yet. Just the Streak is what people are calling him. But Star is obsessed with killing him, so they steal this phaser, and he's like, "This guy helps him." Like, okay, I know how to do it now. So he starts kills him, and he plans to trap the, the Flash. You know, the Streak he goes to fight with him. He almost freezes. You know, it's like at a theater or a museum. Goes around the museum for this diamond. You know, he's, he's going to shoot his gun until Barry shows up. But you find out also that flat, I mean that uh, Cisco built the gun. Um, he has a good reason for it though, but you know, Dr. Wells gets pissed. He's like, why did you do that, Cisco? Now that, you know, now that you've given it to the hands of a criminal who could kill him, but Cisco, you know, Barry's in there like, why would you do that? He's like, it's like Barry, I'm sorry. But the reason I didn't tell you, I should have, yes, but I'm sorry. But he's like, well, I didn't know who you were at the time. You turned out you're a really good guy. You're a good dude. You're, you're a good dude. You're a good guy, Barry. I just didn't know you could have been a criminal. And I, I just want to pick, because, you know, speed and ice don't go, are not a good mix. So I figured it'd be to stop you, because he didn't know. And I, and I can understand Cisco's reasoning. He didn't know Barry. Didn't know who he was at the time. Didn't know this person. He could have been dangerous. He could have been a criminal. He didn't know. He's just being cautious. Yeah. But I guess Cisco probably didn't want to tell him just to not hurt his feelings, but he does eventually forgive Cisco, you know. But Captain Cold, you know, those are the we're calling now. Cold starts shooting at people, freezing people, Barry tries to save them. He's like he's like, Well you won't stop me, I'll start freezing people and Barry, you know, flashes or uses sorry. Super speed. But eventually, you know, Stark does shoot another guy real fast, and Barry feels guilty because the guy dies. So Barry feels like it's his fault. But he just couldn't be fast enough. He didn't save him in time. But he said, well, you know, you can't save everybody. You know. Excuse me. He tries to start down again. He's Captain Cold again on a train. He's like, but I, he, he has his diamond that he stole. He's like, well, uh, I doubt you're going to stop me because then he freezes the train, the engines, which will make it, you know, blow up and then it'll kill all these people on the train. He's like, he's like, I know you're not going to stop me now. So, you know, Flash is able to use his super speed and it successfully saves everybody on the train. But he freezes Barry, you know, shoots him with a gun and just hurts him. He's about to kill him until, you know, Cisco and Felicity show up and say, hey, try to do something now. And he's like, he's like, kid, you never, she never killed anybody before. And he's like, so I was like, okay, I'll let you go for now. And then he walks away, basically telling the Flash to leave him alone, so they don't arrest him. Barry does, like I say, forgive him, but Wells is mad about it. He even, he said, he's like, Cisco, don't do that again. He grabs Cisco's arm and squeezes it, and you know, and uh, uh, Cisco is like. Off put by that, he's like, why would he do that? Why would he touch me like that? You know, that's just that strange behavior. Because again, they believe that he's a great man, a great scientist, one of the probably the best in, in Central City. So a lot of people, a lot of 
people that love science look up to him. But, you know, he would think that's strange. He's like, okay. <laughs> but anyway, Iris has been in a relationship with Eddie. They don't tell Dawn. I mean, not Dawn. That, <laughs> Eddie Dawn. <don't. laughs> yeah, it's Detective Eddie that her, that, you know, that her and uh, Eddie been dating. Of course, Joe knew, because he's a detective. He does accept it, finally. You know, he just doesn't want <laughs> him talking about it you know, to him. <laughs> Dad kisses for the sake about his life. If you ever need me there, I'll be there. He was like, the thing is, though, Barry, we can't have the people we want, you know, because Felicity is in love with Oliver Queen, but Oliver hasn't shown those feelings. Neither has Iris shown those feelings for Barry. She does have those feelings for Barry. She just doesn't really show them, you know, or just figure Barry's just too late. Later, though, Star Trek's down his former par friend, a partner who has an infatuation with fire, Heat Wave, uh, Mick. And they want to take Central City from the Flash. They want to take out the Flash, and the episode ends there. So, but going rogue, that was a really good episode. Really, really cool way to introduce uh, Captain Cold. Well liked. Mm. And then, this episode I thought was okay. I only have two episodes, so I'll go talk about the okay ones. This episode I thought was alright. This was called Plastique. A woman named Bet named Betty. Bet sounds a metahuman. human she has the ability to turn anything she touches into explosive she tries to rob this place and when she touches something she's like okay and then she runs away she's been hunted by General Wade Elling Eiling played by Clancy Brown who of course has worked with DC before he voiced Lex Luthor in the Superman the anime series yeah. and the Justice League cartoons she you know was a former military special expert but he wants to use her power for soldiers. Basically, I think General Arlene's goal is for power and stuff. You find out that him and Harrison Wells work together. They worked on the on, gorilla, on, on a gorilla named Grodd, who is also one of Flash's enemies. He becomes smarter too, becomes different, lives in the sewers. But you find out that he would do these experiments on Frog, on, not Frog, Grodd. He did these experiments on Grodd to that, you know, that they control men's minds or whatever do these experiments on him, but Harrison Wells says no, because he had a special bond, like a fatherly bond, like God, he was like a, a father to him, basically, so he's like, no, that's not going to happen. Barry brings her to Star Labs, even Cisco finds her attractive, he calls her like, I'll blow something up, she doesn't make a joke out of it, they train her with the powers. Uh, Similarly, Wells convinces her to kill Ivy, so she tries to do it. So Barry races to stop her, but Arlene, Arlene shoots her. Barry, she's like, you know, Barry knocks him out, but Arlene shoots her, and he even sees Barry on the flash of masters of knowing that he's Barry Allen, and she's like, oh my God, she's Barry, she's become nearly she'll explode, and she's like, Barry. Before she dies, she's like, Barry, Dr. Wells, he, Dr. Dr. Wells, what? But she dies, and he's like, yeah, so Doc, you know, she, he, you know, Cisco and Mom, I mean, Cisco and Caitlin and Wells tell him that she was, she's going to explode, so he has to run on water for the first time, which is cool, it works, but he has to run real fast, it's like a t big tidal wave coming his way, and eventually, sadly, she had to die. Eileen visits Wells, wants to work together, but of course he you know, doesn't want to. For a time to collect metahumans. And he, and he tells you know, him, you know, don't return to Charles, don't ever come back here. 
Barry ends his friendship with Iris after she refuses his advice to write about the streak. She wants to write do a vlog about the streak, get this vlog about him, but her father doesn't want her to, Joe doesn't want her to do it. Just for her protection because someone who's going to come after her or, you know, these men he was finding could, could find out about her or whatever. And, you know, Barry like, we shouldn't see each other for like, you shouldn't write this blog. He even tries to talk to her as the Flash. Yeah. You know, even goes to her as the Flash thing. You shouldn't write for me. I think that happens in the next. But anyway, you see, Will is going to grow without saying that he's plans for him. You know, future plans for him. In the episode, it's a, uh, yeah, plastic was alright. And then another favorite of mine is called The Flash is Born. Barry ends up spinning off to this car thief who was actually a guy named Tony Woodward who you find out was, uh, uh, you know, Barry's nemesis. He was, uh, he really buried when they were kids in school. But his scan turns to steel. He, he got, of course, her body polarized earlier too. He got affected. So he he's a metahuman. So he has super strength. Barry tries to fight him at first, but he did, you know, try to punch him so Barry. He grabs Barry by the fist and punches him out, almost kills him. Barry determines him that well, the only way really not would work out is to specific, you know, velocity of right angle, which means he has to go like a hundred miles or something and run like really fast just to give him a punch. <laughs> Barry even shows to learn how to fight by using a super speed with a robot but gets knocked out like, who's your daddy? No, I'm just kidding. No. Tony Woodward also had a card from Iris, comes to visit her, finds out that she reads her blog and that she's been writing about the street. And he tells that the street is a wimp, you know, I took him out, because Tony likes to fight. And Barry even tries to, as a flash, go in his room, I mean, not in his room, but go to his place, find out what the guy's been stealing away up to. Of course, Tony catches him and, you know, nearly kills him. So it's the point where it's just going on well, I mean, where Cisco and Caitlin have to come in the straw lab's truck to come and get him. He said, Barry, you almost got killed. And so he kidnaps Iris. So he's a member of this place. And, you know, he, she even tries to pull some, you know, Iris for a second is able to flirt with him just to trick him. You know, but then turn the fire alarm off on. He's like, you would do that again. It almost hurts her. Not knocks her out. And he tries to fight with him, with him, but Barry finally does that run, even though it could probably kill him. He does anyway, and successfully punches Tony out. He's like, yeah, baby! Woo! Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. And Barry, uh, you know, but what I like though, Tony gets back up like, this is all you got? And then, you know, Iris just punches him out, which I thought was awesome. Because it was pretty much not that anyway from that punch. He just got up for a quite a second, and, you know, and Iris punches, Iris punches him. Punches Tony, that was cool. Joe is, of course, investigating over his murder. He gets suspicious of it. He goes out to your Wells, even, and, you know, having a phone conversation, like, he said, like, Well, Wells, you were, you know, where were you at the time of that murder? What were you doing? What were you living at? He's like, Oh, and here I thought we were two guys just having a friendly conversation. He opened up a one month after Nora's murder, but Will states that he came to Central because of his wife's death. Joe's convinced that he's not involved. And Joe gets a visit by the second speedster, Reverse Flash, you know, who takes all the evidence and has a picture of Iris with a knife on it, stabbed in it, stabbed in it. 
and saying, you know, stop, I'll kill her, basically threatens Iris' life. It goes as a type of investigation, and the episode ends there. But a really good episode, in my opinion. There's another favorite of mine, it's called Power Outrage. Wells goes to his secret room. He documents Barry's abilities, talking to Gideon. Barry goes to the, of course, being CSI, goes to this crime scene and it was murdered by electrocution, but found out it's a metahuman. Him and his friends are partying that night and he gets the power of electricity. And this metahuman wants to kill Harrison Wells. Intervention because he has to kill his friends, so and he blames Wells for what happened to him. A lot of people, you know, Wells has a bad reputation for what happened, you know, you know, loses his reputation because of it. A man named Fogo Gibbon, uh, eventually, Barry, you know, Flash has to stop him. But he's able to use his powers and, you know, he's able to take his powers away. And, <laughs> you know, Barry, Barry has to, in his suit, has to get a ride from a taxi cab. He's like, why are you visiting that? I was going to, that I was going to do a cosplay or whatever. <laughs> Didn't really know he was the Flash. But Barry's upset, that episode was upset and says, it sucks not being a Flash, not being able to save anybody, not being able to be fast anymore. And he's upset by this because he feels Caitlin. I love being the Flash. I love being a hero. I love helping people. It's just who I am. I love doing it. Now, yeah. and of course, this damages the timeline though, as he check as uh, he checks. You know, tells Gideon in the future is different now. It's like there is no Flash at all. Uh, of course, the man, given, you know, Ellis Kushner, whatever I'll call him now, I guess, shows the heck up and shows up and gets into the building, tries to look for them. Barry tries to talk to him. You know, Barry, what makes him a hero is that he has a good heart. He tries to help other people. He tries to help others. You don't have to do this, but he got his list, so he attacks Barry, so he secretly goes to, you know, to Tony. Tell him for your freedom, you can kill this guy. So Tony punches the guy, Tony fights him a little bit, but Tony get, ends up getting killed. And Barry sees, you know, Barry and Cameron's hands like, Tony! He's like, Barry. Because, you know, Barry unmasked himself already, he knew he was the Flash. But the guy, you know, Gibbon kills Tony. Tony dies, you know. Yeah. But Barry, you know, thankfully he's able to get his feet back, you know, and kills, it. well, I guess you can say given getting killed by accident, you know. Meanwhile, though, you have this guy named the Flock King, or Talking Man, whatever his name is, you know, he's always about time. Kidnaps Iris and Joe, well, has the police station, you know, and for, you know, hostage. But, you know, Eddie even tries to be a hero and gets shot because of it. Yeah. Uh, I was just smart enough to grab a gun and stop him, which I thought that was cool. And then he gets re -arrested. But, you know, later, Will sees that the time timeline is fine. And he takes a sample of Given his blood to determine he was able to drain Barry's abilities because he wants more of his speed. Um, I was also going to say, you know, why is Tony dead? I mean, who let him, how did he get out? And then, you know, Wells reveals that he did it. He's like, what? You used him as a pawn? That was wrong to do. You shouldn't have done that. He's like, why would you care very little about a man that, you know, tormented you as a child? I'm like, 
Either way, we don't kill. We don't do that. You know. So don't do it again. You know. But, yeah. Again, that's another reason for them to be maybe a little suspicious of Wells or, again, change behavior from him. But anyway, good episode. Power outrage. Because yeah. it's mainly about, you know, Barry. Even though without his speed, he's still a hero. Even without being the Flash. Because he has a good heart. Another favorite of mine is called the man in the yellow suit. Uh, the speech of returns you see in the beginning of this episode is like a Christmas episode. Uh, you see, you know, Barry running with a flash, reverse flash, chasing him, and you have one day earlier coming up. And you find out that Ronnie is alive, that they call this man the Burning Man, and that is actually Ronnie. Even though she tells Cisco when, and stuff, you know, Cisco, Cisco was like, it's like, Kayla, I'm sorry, Ronnie's dead. You were just seeing things. So much she accepts it, then she realizes, well, he's actually really alive, you know. Uh, Barry confesses his love for Iris. He's like, he's like, Iris, I love you. He's like, I love you too, Barry. No, Barry. She's like, no, Iris, I, I am in love with you. I've been in love with you for a long time. I've just never been able to tell you. I was, you know, at a moment of crying there. And, yeah. She does the same thing to Eddie. She even looks at Barry. You can tell somewhat, maybe she, like I said, she has somewhat feelings for him as well. But, you know, Barry's in his office, in his lab, looks outside. Sees a man sees the man in the yellow suit, decides to go chase him. He's like, Who are you? you know. He's like, I don't know who you are. Flash changes his voice. Uh, chases the man in the yellow suit. He's like, That's why you're weak flash and of course he can't catch him because the reverse flash is faster, nearly kills Barry. Comes close to doing it. But they find a way to use this tacky on the popular technology. They use this as a bait to, re to reverse flash. And he's like, Who are you? He's like, Well, let's talk to reverse flash saying, You know, who are you? He's like, No, I'm not flash. Some will say, I'm the reverse. You know, because the reverse flash is able to break out. You know, it's Joe. And they believe that it's actually the man in the yellow suit. It is the man that murdered Barry's mother. But Barry can't do anything so they, because they don't want him getting caught or doing something he shouldn't do. But he almost kills Thorne. He's, he's, he kills the rest of the cops. But spares Eddie and Joe. Yeah. And gets away. And Wells gets a beating. From the man in the yellow... Yeah. From reverse flash. Beats him up. Joe tells Eddie about many humans that they're real. Uh, Cisco was able to realize that there were two speakers and tells Joe, I did tell Joe about this because they both work on this, and tells him that it's, from, it's a future Barry, a future Flash, from the future. Actually, 136 years later, Flash, I guess you could say. Yeah. Something like that, because I remember Will saying that he was from that timeline, but anyway. Will's into the secret rooms, and it reveals that the reverse flash suit is in his room, basically saying that Will's is the reverse flash. You know, you see a suit in there. He's like, 
you know, when he looks at it, he's like, so you assume a flash. Yeah. And another favorite of mine, yeah, but that was good. Another favorite of mine is called Revenge of the Rogues. Yeah. Revenge of the Rogues. Barry works on improving his speed through our training exercises. Like I said, the whole thing with the missiles running. Uh, he returns to Central City. They still a painting. And of course, you know, Mick is the one who has the gun that, you know, gets fire out of it. You know, don't knock the front start as he almost got killed last time. Uh, but they end up getting kidnapping Caitlin. They decide, you know, you know, I, re I mean, uh, say, uh, <laughs> snort, you know, murder and make almost turn to each other. But basically, the hell with the painting. You know, so. Instead of just robbing, they decide to kill the Flash, take him on in a fight, you know, and get rid of him and murder him, you know, so that the town will be theirs, you know, so they can rob any place they want without Flash being around. Of course, the Flash is the face of the duo in the city. And of course, this is the first time people are actually seeing the Flash. Uh, can't really take them one with one, he's a fire with them. So he's able to use a super speed to get them to shoot their guns at each other, knocking themselves out. He's like, you're done, Leonard. And of course, they end up going to jail. Make almost wants to fight with the cops. Uh, thankfully he needs help with Eddie. Eddie even jumps in, you know, with a police shield, you know, and Barry saves him. He like, plus jumps there, he's like, thank you, detective. Uh, as they're going to, you know, they're in a truck and going to a prison, but eventually the truck gets halted, gets stopped by, of course, and guards get killed by his sister, Lisa. Caitlin investigates the cause of Ronnie's dis transformation and finds out the army is covering it up. That you find out that Ronnie didn't die, but you know, you find out also about this Dr. Martin Stein. Not Stein, no, I forget Martin's name. Yeah, this professor who, you know, he emerged with. And they're basically like in the same body. You know, are sharing it. Yeah. Uh, Barry moves back in with Joe when Iris moves in with Eddie. Yeah. But we're going to the Rose Kid episode of my opinion. Alright, another favorite of mine is called... Well, actually, this one is just an okay episode. It's just one more okay episode, and that's it. That is called The Sound and the Fury. Uh, you see Rose go home, of course, you know, when he's in his own home, his own privacy. He's able to get out of his own wheelchair. Because he can't walk, gets out of his wheelchair, almost gets killed. Sorry. Yeah, almost gets killed because this guy shoots uh, this, the last brakes. He's able to use a super speed to get out of it. They come to investigate his house and they say, we don't, we never been to his house. He was privately and they say, is there somebody after you? And you find out there's this guy named Harley Rathway, who was a former protege or employee. And he has a sonic blast or whatever. I didn't like Hartley. Uh, you found out a past with him that he was 
he was in a strong life before Cisco was, because, of course, we'll have hired him. And the questions that he thinks, you know, that Cisco is not smart enough, and Cisco does prove him wrong, and the Harley's a jerk, and the, the guy's an asshole, you know. I do not like Harley at all, he's not a very interesting character, just a snob. But, he's using his ability to attack the windows, attack businesses, and of course Flash shows up. He's able to knock Flash out a little bit, but Flash is able to get some handcuffs on, Dam damper his powers. So they put him in the prison, and you find that he was actually planning to escape. He tries to set up Barry, uh, sets this trap up to damper his powers. He kills Flash, but Flash is able to stop him eventually. Yeah. Later, Joe has a start an investigation into Wells because he still finds him somewhat suspicious or hunches, hunch. Rathway, since he's back in the prison, he reveals that he knows where Ronnie's at, where he's at, what happened to him. In a secret room, Wells uses the tachyon technology to recharge the speed force energy. Iris gets hired by a company, well, newspaper company, but realizes that she's a student so, they, so she can make a story on the flash. And she's working with this guy named Mason Bridge, I think his name was, yeah, that he's a top reporter and that she's been wanting to work with him. And the guy's a bit of a jerk at first, but really good episode of mine. No, it was alright. <laughs> It's just okay. I just didn't like Harley. I just didn't find he can control the last and just do all this stuff with okay. I think that's better than the small though, but that's just my opinion. Alright, so that was okay. So done with the okay episodes. Alright. So another favorite of mine is called Crazy for You. You have this lady named Shauna. Beast, who has the ability to teleport anywhere she wants, so she gets her boyfriend out of prison. Uh, he, you know, they rob a place or whatever, decide to rob it. She, her boyfriend apparently owes a mobster some money, so they decide to rob some places to get that. They try to stop her, but he can't. You know, as a flash, she's able to be fast, but she's almost as quick too with her powers. So a bit difficult. He nearly gets shot back in the neck. I mean, the bullet graces his neck, but he's able to catch it in time before it goes into his body. You know, like this, it was, you know, just passes him out for a while. Uh, his dad wants to, Henry wants to help him. He knows information about the gangster or whatever. Eventually he gets his dad stabbed. And so the man that stabbed him though, Barry finds out who hired him by grabbing the guy out of prison and of course getting sent up to more prison gets more jail time for it. You know, of course he's not going to put him back. Because the guy stabbed his dad. <laughs> but Henry ends up being okay later on. But they try to get away, you know, when Flash and the police, Joe, try to stop them. But, you know, they're like in this tunnel or whatever. But Barry's able to use, you know, Flash is able to break the barrier, break the, break the lights real fast. And she can't see where she's going. She tries to fight Flash a little bit, by the way. You know, but her powers don't work, so she ends up, you know, in their, in their main human prison. Cisco brings, you know, Brathway out of his cell to get help. They reveal that Brathway was that Dr. Martin Stein, you know, 
find out about him. I do like that, you know, when he first saw Barry, <laughs> that they're talking, and Barry just running his mouth off to Mark, you know, to Martin Stein. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, the door's about to shut, you know. But you find out that he has this, you know, this Firestorm project that he's been working on, his research, and it almost gets lost. The parcel goes off, and him and Ronnie emerge as two as two people. Ronnie and Sterling end up emerging before he escapes Cisco's custody. Well, he punches Cisco at first. They fight at first. Cisco's able to use his weapon, but he just tracks Cisco enough. He's able to destroy that and get away. Barry starts dating uh, this girl named Linda Park. Linda Park is gorgeous. Oh, I can't. She's a really cute girl. Henry is serious that he knows Barry. I think Barry doesn't tell me he's a flash, but he can somewhat, I think, knows. Elsewhere, two city workers are in the are in these sewers, and they get attacked by Grodd. Yeah. So we don't have alligators in sewers; we have giant gorillas now. <laughs> but that was a good episode. Crazy for you. And another third of mine is called the Nuclear Man, where they work on the team attempts to track down Sterling's whereabouts. You know. Again, his hair is going really long. He's like, you know, even the Burning Man, a Firestorm, you know, fights off. You know, he's able to use his powers on a reverse flash reverse to help Barry. Trying to help the nuclear man or Firestorm. You find out that his Marcel's wife, Clarissa, Stein, Clarissa, Clarissa, you know, said that my visit her, he's just inside his body, that they can help him out. Uh, Mary and Caitlin are able to get them apart eventually in an episode. It was Island to go out to Firestorm. Uh, but when they emerge out, they nearly explode. So he has to pick up so, uh, so Barry, you know, Flash has to get Caitlin and run out of there, you know, from the explosion. And they find out that they're okay. Yeah. He's like, what's your name? Morning Raymond. And they reconnect. You know, they share a kiss. That was a moment. Uh, Joe asked Cisco to compare the blood to Wells and informs that Joe about it. They do tell what they do, Barry, but even though he suspect Harrison Bowles, I'm like, at first, Cisco's like, no, I'm not working with you, Joe, we're done. I don't believe you. But, you know, Joe's a cop, he knows that some people, even if they seem like the nicest person in the world, they could still be a suspect. In the meantime, though, Linda believes Barry is still in love with Iris. But he proves to her that he loves her by <laughs> eating a whole pepper. He's like, okay, I believe you, I believe you. You know, that, that was funny. But a good episode, my opinion. But she didn't want to date Barry anymore because she felt that he was still in love. Yeah. And another favorite. Yeah, a mine's called Fallout. Joe reveals his findings to Barry, but Barry doesn't believe it. That he trusts Willis, that Willis saved his life many times. That, you know, he's a good man. Refuses to believe it. Uh, but when they 
for a little bit. Say, come on, guys, let's get you some help. I do like it though when at first they meet each other again, and Stein says, "Are we all going to push next? Are we going to stand around, and hold hands, and sing Kumbaya? Or can I get a change of clothes?" So they both go back home, and they both, you know, well, you weren't the real person to be around. I'm like, I think they're all happy, but find out that General Ivy, again played by Clancy Brown, you know, wants to use their power for the army because he wants their power. So they always start hunting them down, and they get, they have like a connection with each other. If Ronnie's in trouble, he goes and robs. They just uh, you know fall, you know they can feel if they're in pain. You know, Ronnie will get shot you know on a date with Caitlin, but they ever get away. You know, they, Barry has, you know, Flash goes to come try to save them. You know, not some of the military, but I don't think there was like this box up and it, and it like hurts the Flash, just like these spikes and different his body. He's like, I know who you are, Barry Allen. I know you the Flash. But they have this equipment for them, which Ryan puts on his chest and when they like shake hands, they emerge. Uh, because highly torture Stein, one find out about Firestorm, almost ready to kill him to fly, saves him, and then they fight the guys. They they able to use, you know, which I thought was cool. I like Firestorm, the Firestorm character, that was cool. And he's using his abilities to use the fire to take out some bad guys. You know, Flash, <laughs> you know, his mask really comes off when he's having to fight fire with fire kind of in a way. <laughs> Meanwhile, though, Iris, Major and Bruce tells her to believe that Wills deliberately caused a solar explosion. So she says to help Major with his investigation, Barry tells Bill that he, Joe that he will travel back time to save Norma from the river flesh. He's like, I can do this. I can go back in time and save her. But, you know, he wants to learn from his mistakes. As the river flesh, though, Wills kidnaps Eileen and brings him back to the supers. Wills goes himself to Eileen and allows Grodd, who, you know, Grodd attacks him, especially out of revenge. Yeah, and basically Grodd takes control of his mind. Or tortures him a little bit, too. But a good episode of my opinion. And that was Fallout. So another favorite of mine is Out of Time. Just a couple more, guys. Out of Time. Uh, in this episode, you have Martin Martin, Martin, Fly's brother, returns to Central City. Apparently, he didn't die that night. He got the weather, the power of Weather Wizard, too. So he's the Weather Wizard. He attacks this guy, this, the, the coroner. You know, the one that does the autopsy on the body, dead bodies. He's like, who killed my brother? I can't tell you that. Pfft. Tell me that. Pfft. And then he tells him, forces about him, nearly kills him. Well, he does feel good, the corner. There he comes to the crime scene. Realizes what's happened. Uh, Linda ends up getting jealousy between Barry and out, you know, because they go to hang out with him and Eddie, you know, kind of like a double date to go bowling. Or they just meet up with each other. And so much like Linda and Eddie can tell that, Linda and Eddie can tell that Iris and Barry, you know, have a little flotation going on that there's the two might actually like each other. Mason, Mason said he's knows that Wells killed Stag, you know, with Iris and Barry. But they began that to believe that Joe was right about what was all wrong. They check the techno technology machine that fell to hold him and he found out that it was tampered with and they said help Joe and they said, you know, we gotta keep it secret. It's like he's coming down, you know. He's going really on down there. And he's like, someone say, I'm the reverse flash. 
He's like, you're him? You're the real Flash? He's like, yes, Cisco, I am. My, and he tells Cisco, my real name is Evar Thawne. I'm from the future. Uh, but you've been helping Barry this whole time. Why? He's like, because I need his speed so I can get back to my time. He's like, how'd you do that? You know, you were beaten up by the real Flash. He's like, hmm. And he shows him that he can make, like, a double version of himself. Uh, a speed mirage, you know. He's able to do that. And he doesn't want Cisco to know a secret. His Kevin has not been watching. So he's like this. He's like, does this thing with his arm really fast, but he can just go in then with his fisting. And he crushes it. He's like, Cisco, even though you've been like a son to me, I'm sorry about this. And he kills Cisco. And Cisco dies. And he's also a relative of Eddie's as well, an ancestor. And he's been stranded there in the present day. Marcin kidnaps Joe, though. You see him and Joe talk about Iris a little bit. And Joe knows, by the way, that Iris, you know, and Barry someone have feelings for each other. But he's like, well, you're too late, Bear, you know. But anyway, he kidnaps Joe, forces him to watch as Martin creates a tsunami in order to kill Iris, or to kill everybody. Barry reveals his feelings, Iris reveals her feelings, that she does have feelings for Barry. They share a kiss. I'm sorry to find out this way. And he shows her that he's the Flash, and he's able to, you know, run back and forth to create a, like a big little shadow wave or something like that of himself to explain it. Barry runs back and forth across the ghost line to create a barrier against the tsunami, but he runs so fast that he travels back in time the day before. So he's already seen this because when Barry was running earlier in the episode, he saw like a, another version of himself running. Either he was just seeing things or daydreaming it. But then he's like, what the heck? And at the end he realized he just time traveled and the episode ends there. We got another favorite of mine, it's called Road Time. Uh, like I said, that was up again with Barry realizing where he's at. He's going through the day events again. The, I'm sorry, the day events again of what's going to happen, but he already knows what's going to happen. He finds out where, because they found out where, you know, Martin's hideout was. So he grabs Martin, puts him in jail. But, of course, Thawne, I mean, I'm sorry, Wells. <laughs> Knows that he's up to it, and he's like, he's like, you time travel. He was like, don't tell me anything that happened the day before. It was like, don't mess with time. There, if you screw with time, time will screw with you, and eventually it does. Uh, Cisco has a goes to his brother's Dante birthday party. Who, I didn't like Dante very much. He's a bit of a jerk for a brother, but anyway, Dante and him get kidnapped. Well, Dante gets kidnapped by Captain Cold, who was able to use Lisa to, you know, seduce seduce him into bringing her back to the place, but nothing happens. Cole shows up and says, oh, yeah, and but he comes to Iris, Barry does, sorry, I, was, I go over where she Barry reveals his feelings to Iris and she's like, no, Barry, you're too late. I mean, don't come back at me every time when you want when one of some, you know, and of course, Eddie finds this out. She tells Eddie, I guess. Eddie, you know, they go to this crime scene where they, these fight takes place and Flash is able to start Captain Cold a little bit, but they ever get away. You know, later, you know, Eddie punches, uh, you know, well, Eddie punches Barry in the face. He says, hey, Barry, Eddie punches him in the face. He's like, you stay away from Iris. They're like, if you guys have a problem, take it outside. He's like, what's this drama about? I'm like, yeah. And Cisco returns upset, saying that he realizes his identity because him and his brother are trying to fight Meg, but Meg's able to take them out. They're able to calm them, calm them down. And he's like, you tell me where who the flash is, I'll kill your brother. 
And so he does, and he's like, I gotta quit Starla. She's like, even, you know, I'm sorry, Barry, Barry, you've been forgiven for, but Cisco still intends to quit and leave. But eventually, Will is able to convince him to stay. He's like, everything's okay. Yeah, we love you, Cisco. Yeah. You're just put in a tough spot. So, before he goes to Robert Truck, you know, Flash goes and he's like, I know it's you, Barry Allen, under there. He's like, I'm going to read your identity if you stop killing people. He's like, why don't you leave, go somewhere else? He's like, can't. I love the smell of this place. I love, this is my home. I love Central City. I love robbing you, so. Uh, she tells, yeah, Caitlin helps out though with Eddie and Iris' drama by telling him that, you know, Barry suffered something in the brain and he said there's something wrong and he apologizes to him that's their excuse the reverse flash eventually finds out that Mason has his information on him so he kills Mason by you know through the heart by with his fist and is able to erase the information to stag death Mason's vanishing causes the bear to accept Joe was right about Will, even though he didn't want to believe it at first. Alright. Good episode, in my opinion. Just a few more, guys. Alright, and then another favorite of mine is called Trickster. This is where we have Mark Hamill come back as J.C. James, a.k.a. the Trickster, because remember, he was in the 1990 uh, TV series as well, of The Flash. And, also, guys, he's what we did see before, because Mark Hamill, of course, was the Joker in Batman the MA series. In the Batman Beyond the the Joker movie and a couple of the Arkham video games. So he's worked with DC before. Yeah. Barry Joe go out to a test named Alice Walker who is using the trickster Alice's this. But it's all the version of like James Jesse James out they go visit Mark Hamill and Mark Hamill can't play a villain, let me tell you. I can see why back in the nineties they wanted him to play the Joker because he's got that voice. The craziness. He's like, I can smell it. <laughs> yeah. He's like, tells him about his tricksters' ways and that he can help them. He's like, what well, is this how you do it? You know, and, and he sees that this guy has got the mask. He's like, no, I'll take the mask off. Take the mask off, you imposter. But then, you know, they break Jesse out of jail along with kidnapping Barry's father, Henry. You know, and, he, and Jesse reveals to Alex that he's his father. Jesse and Walker, you know, expect to steal from people with the trick of poisoning them. He's like, oh, Flash, you're not going to do with these people poison. He puts this cuff on them, though, whatever. That's like a, a bomb, so Barry has to run really fast to get it off. He's like, Barry, he can't stop. It's like the movie Speed. He can't stop or he'll explode. So he has to keep on running. And to a you know, what was his able to talk to him like this? Barry, slide, breathe. Barry, Barry does and is able to face through a truck and able to get the timer bomb off of him. Barry ends up revealing an antidote to the patrons. He just, you know, Pokes them all with a really fast like, ow, ow. But it does save their lives, including ours, is was poisoned as well. And of course, Jesse ends up going back to jail, his dad ends up being safe. Well, they do a trickster trap on him where these knives will fall on him. So Flash is able to save him for the knives fall on him. He's like, Flash, and then he's like, What like, Barry, I know it's you. And Barry takes his mask off and they have a good laugh. He's like, Of course, I can't believe. I'm so proud of my son. They have a good moment. Uh, but eventually, they want, they decided to bring Eddie in on the secret. So Barry reveals that he is the Flash to, to, to Daddy's like, detective and takes his mask off like, we need your help. That he, that was the reverse Flash. And then you finish seeing a time flashback where, even though he killed Barry's mother, the reverse Flash escapes only to lose his speed. But not only to lose his speed, He's trapped in the time zone and getting, he's like, Dad, where am I? He's like, you're 
in this area, you're stuck here, your speed's going, you're trapped here. He's like, no, you know. And traveling through the time is trains his powers, I guess you can say, it's kind of a punishment for messing with time. You know, when you screw with time, I guess it screws back. But Thon ends up tracking, I mean, sorry, stalking Harrison Wells, learning about him, becoming him to, he wants to start this power of accelerator so that he has a plan to create the Flash. Because Barry Allen is not yet the Flash. So instead of killing Barry, he'll just create him. So Thon kills Harrison Wells, steals his identity and his appearance so that he can develop his power of accelerator. Pol accelerator sooner. And return to his time wall, even though that would be like in many years, I guess 2013 it'll be 2020 when he does that. But he wants to do it earlier. But Trisha's really good episode. Great to have Mark Hamill back. You know, great and <laughs> creepy as always. Does a good job of that. Yeah, I love Mark Hamill's performance as a Trisha. Yeah. Alright, another favorite of mine is called All Star Team Up. Bay works, you know. With Joe across the city, they stop these crimes in one night. They ever stop these thieves from running, you know, running, getting away in the core. They stop the bank robbery. The jewel thief robbery. You know, Flash does. They find out uh, this metahuman human who can control bees. She's a revenge on Dr. Christina McGee, who's actually Amanda Pays. Pays, I can't say her name right, but she, of course, was. You know, Tina McGee from the 1990 show, TV series of Flash. Yeah, and she works at Mercury Labs. She's a stubborn woman, as you can find out later. She's a very stubborn woman, able to handle herself. But this woman that she buzzed off is apparently angry. And Charlie's B, she starts killing some people with it. And, you know, you do find out that Felicity Smoke comes back along with Bray Palmer, who was the Adam. Really cool suit. Of course, he's playing Brandon Routh. Y'all should know him as. Again, he was with DC too. He was Superman. Superman. I like him better as the Adam, though. But that's just me. And they want to improve his Adam suit, so he needs help doing that to even shrink it. Uh, they, you know, this other B attack happens, but Flash is too late, and these bees go out to Flash, and they're they're very fast. These bees. And they nearly kill him, and Barry dies for a second. So, with a suit on, there's a liberator in it. I can't say it, but it's like a shock to start your heart. And it actually works. So, Barry has his butt back to life. The team is a capture one of the bees that is, you know, I guess you say she knows the flash's identity now because she put a bee in there. But until they have a capture bee, learn about her. Her name is Brie Larvin. Yeah. Who's targeting former employees, including her boss, Dr. Tina McGee. But basically, her research was killing people, and that's the reason she got rid of her father, but she attempts to kill her. And she doesn't want, like I said, she's a stubborn woman, because she does not want a stubborn woman, because she refuses the protection of police. Nearly is killed until, of course, Flash saves her. Uh, after that, though, Tina, Dr. McGee, she comes to Barry thanking him, you know, for her help and saying that she apologized for that she should have accepted police protection. She tells him about Wells, like, well, I know Harrison Fred Wells, I mean, we worked together before, but after, you know, his wife Tess died in the accident, he was like a, a different man, changed completely. Cisco believes it, though, that he has been having dreams showing these fire most and they turn to love where again where you know Don killed him but, you know he's had dreams that of course in the later seasons you find out he is a superhero too and uh Cisco but I'm getting ahead of myself there but you know he's having these dreams about it you know or you can say either a dream or an ability Cisco has but good episode of my opinion You know, even Eddie and Iris have issues in their relationship where Eddie can't barely handle lying to her. 
but it's for a good reason, but they're able to reconnect. Another favorite episode of mine is called, Who is Harrison Wells? Uh, Barry and Eddie track a man a human named Hannibal Bates, who can shape shift anyone he touches, versus a woman stealing some money, stealing some stuff. Uh, Bates takes the shape of his grandmother, they're like, I'll go get you some some sweet, some juice, sweetheart, you know. But this, but of course it's not, it's really Bates in disguise. He touches, where they say, Barry, don't let Bates touch you, because if he touches you, if he comes you, that won't be good. <laughs> he touches Eddie, he's like, all right, who are you guys? You know, he's like, cops come over, he's like, he's like, what do you want with us? Dead, and then, you know, Bates shoots the cops, and Eddie, and Eddie gets accused of murdering two cops. Later, Barry knocks Bates, you know, knocks Barry out. I think in disguise as Caitlin, I think. But, you know, those disguises him. Oh, Caitlin shows up later, sorry. Um, you know, even acting weird toward Caitlyn, Barry, well, Bates kisses as Barry, as as Barry kisses Caitlyn. And Caitlyn's like, Barry, why are you doing that? You know, and then they talk with Iris, and Iris gets not, I mean, before, you know, they find out about Bates, he tries to pull a gun out, because next time I find out who he is, or just trying to kill him, but eventually Will shows up and saves him by, you know, giving him a shock. And then Joe and Cisco decide to investigate the car accident in Sterling City, where Rose's wife died, with the help of Captain Clint Lance from Arrow, and you have uh, Sarah, you know, not Sarah, Laura Lance, guest yeah, starring it in here. I forget the actress name of the Lover now, but she's beautiful as well. She's, of course, the Black Canary. Uh, so she helps Cisco out with something. He gives her this, this uh, tie or whatever, not tie or. It's like a necklace or whatever that can control her powers. That's cool. Yeah. But we're good to see Quinn in there and stuff, and just him and uh, Joe talking for a little bit. You know, that was cool. Attempts confirms that the real Wells is dead. Barry Cale and Cisco decide to throw Kate on to get run from Star Wars. I forgot to mention there was an episode earlier where Barry, not Barry, where Cisco and Joe end up going to Barry's house. They find out by using this image, this hologram from like the past or whatever, that Cisco's ever doing away. They would find out that it's from the past. There's also this late blonde lady there who's very gorgeous, but even Joe and finds her attractive as well. But after a series of tests confirms, it reveals that they find out that he is a reverse of his costume in the newspaper article for 2024. They go into the secret room where Gideon is, and Gideon reveals that it was Barry Allen himself who created her, who created Gideon. And the episode ends there with him being in the office looking at the newspaper about the flash going missing. But a good episode, in my opinion. Uh, another favorite of mine is called The Trap. There's a couple more guys. The Barry has to get in orders about his battle with the reverse flash in the future. His key moments in life include marrying Iris. He gets a promotion of the GCPD, becomes the captain. The team is able to get their sister's memories of the dream. And where it gets him to actually confess to actually killing, saying that he didn't plan to kill Nora, he just wanted to kill kill the future Barry, but he failed at doing that, so he killed his mother instead. Barry explains his recent child shows explains to his to Laura Don to confess to killing Nora. Uh, 
Cisco, Cisco was able to reverse the polarity of his containment field to protect him. So, and Bone comes in there, they do speak as usual. Bone's about to kill him again. He's like, but this won't work. And he's very close to doing it. So the thought, I mean, I thought. So Joe shoots him, shoots Will, but Spoiler is not what was actually Hannibal Bates, who he offered his freedom to. He was like, I was like, we trusted you. We, we all trusted you. you. Betrayed us. I was like, yeah, I betrayed you the whole time. He was like, he was like, don't worry, Barry. We're gonna face each other very soon. He was always aware of the actions because he had uh, he had all of them under surveillance the whole time, and he's been watching them. Ruth Rush gives her nerves, but Barry arrives, forcing Thawne to kidnap Eddie instead. Iris is able to find out about the Flash's identity, because apparently when she, when Barry was in the coma, she would visit him, she like touched him, she got like an electric shock from him, and when she touched the Flash, the Flash, you know, was, you know, kind of has identity from her, he has to touch her, and then she's like, Barry? But wasn't that Barry is the Flash? Flashbacks were really lightning that Thawn convicted Joe to tell let him to let him save Barry though, which Joe later regretted. And even, you know, there's a point in the episode where you, know, you see him get up from a short chair and he's like, I can kill you right now so easily, but I'm not going to. I need you to be the flash so I can get home. But a good episode in my opinion. There's another three he's got three more guys. And another favorite of mine is called Grod Lives. Before they're trying to find Eddie and Ebar, you know, where he's got him hidden. Eddie, you know, they end up going to this thief who was robbing this place, but he gets a psychic attack from the guy. Falls like, oh, oh, hurting the head. It's not working. And the thief ends up turning out to be General Eiling, uh, Clancy Brown. Who is mind controlled by Grog. Because he speaks like this, then he's up to them in the head. There's also mind like this. Eiling back Caitlin. Good. Flash. Enemy. That he's actually being controlled. You know, by Gorilla Grog. So they know that if they can find Grog, that he had a special bond with Wells, with Thawne, that they could track Thawne down. If they can get to uh, Grodd. They track Grodd, there's another psychic attack on Barry. Uh, and all of a sudden, though, I mean, uh, all of a sudden, though, Grodd kidnaps, kidnaps Joe, and, you know, even Irish was beginning, like, I knew, you know, like, really flash and they have a talk about that she's upset that he never told her he's like well I just did to protect you because your dad wants to like well can you both stop protecting me and once for once trust me let me make my own decisions yeah uh Cisco and Caitlin Bill Barry devised that kid it's like a mind device or whatever that can stop, you know, Grab from controlling his mind. You know, can't really think of where Grab tries to, but Grab is very, very, very strong. Yeah. You know, he's able to even pick him up by the throat, almost kill Slash, and the train using the spine shield could just train to run over him, but he's able to outsmart, you know, outbeat him. Grab in the mind, in the mind, Grab tries to attack him, you know, but ends up getting hit by a train. Doesn't die, by the way. <laughs> Iris does reveal her feelings for Barry, but she has them. But it takes her choice to be with Eddie. Which, you know, Barry does accept. 
Grodd is alive, though, and he's roaming the streets. You see him climbing on the building. Of course, he's CGI. Meanwhile, though, thought works on the device that will allow him to return home. He knows that Eric to Eddie that Iris and Barry will be married if he's like, well, Eddie, you won't be around. You'll be forgotten in history. And Iris will be married to Barry. And because the byline says, the future says, by Iris West Flower, she wrote the byline. And of course, he's really hiding in a secret chamber, a secret chamber hidden inside Star Labs, and the episode ends there. So that was where I Just two more episodes, guys, and I'm done. Then, Rogue Air. Another fairy of mine called Rogue Air. Cisco discovers that Eobod has been supercharging his speed through his wheelchairs like the it kind of looks like a flux capacitor a little bit, but it's to help him with the speed to go faster. The power accelerator is affected by, by Yvonne, who has managed to repair it. The team is able to find a rescue Eddie. He ends his relationship with Iris, saying that you're going to marry Barry. He's like, you're like, fine, we're done then. But then they got worried about the metahumans who they know they're just human, human beings. So they want to save them or, you know, transport them to Lian Yu, which was the island that Oliver Queen was on before he became the Green Arrow. That he was trapped on for five years that uh, Argus, sorry, Argus kept it there for those years. Yeah, the Argus did that. So, you know, he instead he goes to Captain Cole, which even Joe tries to talk to Cecile, who's a lawyer. Cecile is very gorgeous, by the way. She does get into a relationship with Joe a little later on in the seasons, but not now. So, but she tells him, you can lose your badge for this. You can't do that. It's illegal. And he knows he can't really do it. So, Joe, sorry. But Barry has to go to Captain Cold, you know, to ask him for help and his sister Lisa who uh, Cisco calls Golden Glider yeah Cisco comes up with the names for the villains and stuff uh, what I don't agree to do I want to do something get rid of his identity and all that stuff his criminal record which very like done and very as the flash is able to get done really fast Everything going on, you know, wipes it out for him. They set this prison up. But of course, he, he found out that Stark really betrayed him, and of course, because he's a criminal. So, what do you expect? They like, now these criminals are because he wants to be the big criminal in town, kind of like the big boss in town. Uh, and the men he must come out, even Martin come out, they almost want to fight Flash, give Flash a shock real bad. Barry fights uh, Kyle again, the guy who can, then he can again become poison gas. He's able to use his arms like really fast, like a fan, to stop him, tire him out. And he says, "Sorry, Barry, but we gotta go." <laughs> and you know, Lisa, who again, I'm sure Cisco has friends for her. She wants she's gorgeous, but the actress who plays Lisa, sorry, who plays Lisa in this. Uh, she was in Gotham season one. The actor who plays Mick, Heat Wave, he was uh, in Blade Trinity. Yeah, that, okay, yeah. That film sucked. But anyway, I'm not talking about that. But they escape. But eventually, though, the episode is in there because Barry Firestorm and, of course, Green Arrow himself. This is from him in season three, where he's teamed up with League of Assassins. I'm not going to get into Arrow. But they have fire. And he says he's coming in there to go home. He's like, no, you're not. And they have a showdown, a fight. He's able to chase Barry. Barry's able to get a few good hits in there. Eval comes close to him, having him. But, you know, but Arrow shoot. you know, Oliver shoots him with an arrow. 
that deflects his speed, so he can't use his speed for a little bit, so he fights him like a normal person. Of course he wins, but he gets his speed back and almost kills the arrow. But, you know, it's like, the history book says, Mr. Queen, you're allowed to be idiots, but I'm going to change that. And Kung Fu is almost killing him until Barry stops him. And Barry fight a little more. Uh, Green, uh, Air, Green Air is over shoot him. And Air to him knocking him out so that they can put him in the meta human prison. And he tells Barry, I might need your help for that anytime, anywhere, man. And then Firestorm takes it off as well. But Ronnie, no, Ronnie stays. I think. That's a good episode, man. Yeah. Alright, guys. Then the last episode of season, of season one of the Flash, that is fast enough. Barry visits on the Paul Central prison, asking him why. He's like, I want to kill you right now. I was like, I know you do, Barry. Why'd you kill my mother? I didn't really want to kill you. I didn't intend to kill you. Mother Barry's like, why? I hate you, Barry. I hate you. Not you now, the future you, because we're enemies. We fight a lot. We've been enemies for many years. And I want to kill you. You know. But I couldn't do it. So, so instead of get you out of my way, I decided to go back to time travel. And so you race back there, your future self race back there with me. We fought. But you, you but your future self got your younger self out of there. So then I killed him because I wanted you to live a tragedy, a pain. I wanted you to live in pain. So I killed your mother. And he's like, but Barry, you can go back in time. You can save your mom. You can change the past, what I did. Barry thinks about that. To create this warm hole, warm hole deal, but that could also create repercussions for the city. It could destroy Central City, basically the world. You know, if you think about it. You know, he even talks to. It's, uh, I don't think Joe agrees with it. Well, Joe, you should. You know, you should do it. Joe, like, he even talks to his father, John Wesley Shipp. Talks to Henry, and Henry's like, "No, son, we are a family." You, you can't change things. Sometimes things happen just for us. Things just happen, and you can't control it. You can't mess with time. You can't play God, basically, I guess is what you could say his father was saying. Yeah, you can't tamper with things. There's some things you can't tamper with. Sometimes things just happen for a reason. Maybe Barry's mother dying, that tragedy happened, kind of made him the Flash, made him the hero he is. You know. Because it's like his mother's spirit is almost with him for, you know, always with him. And then that good heart that Barry has probably came from his mother and his parents. So it'll always be there, you know. But he still thinks about it. Until, you know, Iris says that, you know, you deserve a good life. Uh, Dr. Mark, you know, Martin starts working on it. And Eddie and, Don, Eddie and Iris uh, recommend the book. She was like, you know, screw the future. They, and they sure give us. He's like, good luck, Barry. So Barry goes in the bar with Sarah, you know, runs. And then he hears Tom's voice telling him, which is saying, you know, he sees the past, the present, future. He sees his past as, you know, when he went to go with Joe and Iris. Uh, you see Killer, you see Caitlin as Killer Frost in the later season that would happen to her, becoming Killer Frost, and also a Flash Museum he sees. You know, he's just running and seeing images, you know, as he's using his super speed. He's like, just think about the moment, the time you want to go back to, and they'll take you there. And then he did. He goes back to 15 years later, 15 years ago. Has in this room, and he has to wait for his future self to get his himself out of there. And he's like, back to the future. He can't interact with his former self, but his future self sees Prison Barry, and Barry's in the room, and he's like, nothing, stop. Talk to the hand. Well, basically telling him, don't do it, you know. And then Barry realizes he can't, just changes. It's not right. And he has to hear his mom die. And Thon does it. And he's like, and he comes out of the flash, he's like, it's okay, it's okay. And this moment made me cry where he like, his mom is me, he's like, oh, my beautiful baby boy. He's like, I'm so proud of the man you are. Just keep being the man you are. And Barry cries and 
she dies, and you see Barry White but crying, and then that's gone, and the, and the president gets ready to go to his future. Barry jumps out of the wormhole, just punches him in the face. He's like, why did you come back? Yeah, you could have everything you ever wanted. He's like, I already do. I have my family right here. This is why I'm always like this. And then the first of his mask on is like, not for long. And they fight a little more. He's like this. And he's able to tackle Barry down. Almost ready to kill him. He's like, just so we'll clear. After I kill you, I'm going to kill them. Then I'm going to kill your father. Because I always win. Flash. Almost ready to kill him until Eddie shoots himself. You know, and it's hard. Yeah. Kills himself. Cause is gone. You know, erased from existence. You see his real face, though, and he's like, Well, Flash, what are you going to do without me? And then you see him just erased from existence. Because, again, he was way before Eddie was. Many, he wasn't even born when Eddie Gall was around. So, technically, with Eddie dead, he doesn't exist. So, he erased from existence. But the wormhole reappears, gets bigger, and starts to almost destroy the city. And they're able to prevent it from destroying the city apart. Also, we had to mention uh, Ronnie and Caitlin get married. Becomes a black hole. It pulls Eddie inside. And then at the end, you see Barry speeds into the ever speeds, speeds into it, speeds into the wormhole just to stop it. You know, the city's about to be destroyed. He speeds in there and he seems just running. And, and then he in. That's the end of season one for The Flash. So, that's how it ends. But anyway, guys, that was the Flash season one. My thoughts slash favorite episodes of the Flash season one. Uh, again, thoughts on the, the great season. Really loved a lot of episodes in here. Like I said, some minor issues. Two characters in like some of the CGI doesn't hold up. You know, I mean, I get it. It's a TV show, but the CGI wasn't bad. The lightning though, some of the CGI can look pretty good. I admit, and those looks pretty bad, pretty fake at times. But again, it's a TV series. I let it slide. But I do think it's a good episode. I like the monologue, you know, like, hi, my name is Barry Allen. You know, and my mother was killed by the impossible until I became the impossible. was like, and he's, yeah, it's just a good monologue, you know, for him. But a lot of good dialogue in here. Reverse Flash is a good villain. Probably his best villain, almost, because he's the reverse of him. But uh, a great first season. I love the Flash season one. Started off really good, really good storylines. Really great episodes in here. And, you know, it, it, the humor can work out. The action can be really good. You know, when Flash is around the suit, it's really cool to see that. That he can time travel as well. Or, you know, seeing Barry go, you know, Flash using his powers, or even using his powers to get up in the morning and clean himself up. Can be funny at times. And it does. And Flash is funny. You know, I forgot to mention there's a guy that tries to <laughs> rob Barry. He's like, everybody used to have to rob me, and he just able to use his powers. Well, that, that was funny. But this is when Barry, before he became a wino in the show, this is when he was cool, this is when he was funny, you know, a good sense of humor. But Grant Dustin does a great job, and a lot of the cast does a good job. You know, they're all good, and the good villains in here, the main villain in the season, though, was really good. Really good film. I mean, a good show, a good season. So, season one of The Flash, great, great start for the show, in my opinion. This is when the show was great, in my opinion. So, and... Yeah, so guys, tell me in the comments down below if you've seen The Flash season one. I've been watching this, this whole video, though, because of real spoilers. So, yeah, I'll put that in the description box below, too. So, but anyway, guys, if you've seen The Flash season one, what do you think of it in your opinion? And what are your favorite episodes of The Flash season one? Tell me in the comments down below what are your favorite episodes of The Flash season one, okay? Alright. Thank you, guys, for watching, and stay tuned. Hopefully for next week, and I'm hoping for, oh yeah, welcome to September as well, since we're in September as well, I forgot to say that before. But we're in September now, so hope September, so hopefully the rest of this month I'll be talking about the rest of the five seasons. And the next season, of course, will be for Flash. <sighs> next will be my thoughts, slash favorite episodes of the Flash season two. 
So season two will be next. Yep. So the uh, season two. So guys, once again, uh, if I would give a rating for the Flash first season, I'm going to give this five out of five stars. I love this show. This season, it was great in my opinion. Loved it. Thumbs up for the Flash season one. So tell me, guys, in the comments down below if you've seen the Flash, the CW Flash, starring Grant Gustin. What do you think of season one in your opinion? And stay tuned next week, and hopefully, I'm hoping next Saturday for my thoughts so the episodes of the Flash season two. So, see you guys later. Stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in a flash. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye bye. Hope that pun is not getting tiring. But anyway, see you later. Have a good day, y'all. Thanks for watching. Bye.